Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco just shout out movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here. Wow. We're uh moving out. And uh yeah, it was a huge pain in the ass. You know, the past couple of weeks has been like a nightmare on Elm Street. Not in a good way. There's Bernie. Having some more drinky poo. So anyways, this is sort of a Marco Dishes Out on Life episode, actually. You know, I'm still going to do some tours. I'm going to do this room, talk to you about that. Then I'll talk to you about that room. And yeah, anyways. So, basically what I did was, you know, you if you watch that video where I talked about my dreams being crushed. Uh, well, <laughs> I learned a lot more stuff about the house and about things that could poss that are in the house. And I was like, oh, wow, I'm glad I'm leaving. And it, it took some really hard realizations. Uh, and just for instance, on the entrance to the bedroom where we have seen, or where, where other people have seen a ghost twice. In that bedroom, the entrance, which is like the, the pillar at the door, there has always been a 666 carved on that entrance. And so basically, you know, that's bad. Because either, number one, this woman, uh, because it's like, it's some sort of like a, a woman from the Civil War. Look, a penny. Found another penny. Found a lot of monies today. It's either her, and she put it in there on the entrance. She carved it in there to sort of like make sure that, you know, she remembers that it's a ritual room or something, or the other people who lived here before, some other family, they put the 666 on there as a warning to people. And either way, it's really bad. It's very, very bad. Very, very bad. And uh, so I thought that was very bizarre. And, you know, uh, you know, I won't talk about everything right now but just for instance last night look at that I had a cut I fell on my right knee and I cut into my knee like a, a little slice into my knee and you know you could tell I mean you could tell that this house is pissed that I'm leaving you can tell it's like a it's like a feeling in the air and so that was very <laughs> I mean, that was scary last night. Like, I was trying, I was like, I'm going to stay up all night. I'm going to do all this work. And then, no. <laughs> I was like, no, fuck this shit. And I couldn't even do it because I, I fell and I, it, ugh, that was horrible. So, uh, that was another thing that happened. And so, you know, it's really unfortunate because I'll still always like parts of the house, you know, I'll still always miss the scenery, I'll miss, uh, you know, just the view of, like, sitting on the couch, which I'll do later, of, like, just, I don't know, you know, like, when you see something for a long time, and you really like seeing it, and then you never get to see it again, it's like, that's, that's shitty, it's really, really shitty, and the fact that, uh, oh, we'll talk about the people in charge later, the people who own the house. We'll talk all about those people. Believe me. So I wanted to just tell you guys a little update about my movie and happy Halloween as well. What I did was, since I knew that I was going to have to leave the house, I'm going to sit down because my feet are... Ow! Fuck! Oh shit. Uh slashed right into my arm at least it's not a full-on cut 
because I would have had to get a tetanus shot. So I knew that I was going to have to like shoot some stuff as much as possible. And uh, so what I did was I was going to really power through it and shoot with the actress, my main actress, because most of the movie is me and this this character, Amy. And, and that's not a spoiler. Uh, she's sort of like the assistant character in the movie. You know, like in uh, Frankenstein where you have Igor and you have uh, that hunchback guy, Fitz. You know, like she's kind of like that character in a way, but with a twist. And what happened, though, was the actress who I cast and who I was so confident about, all of a sudden, I guess she didn't come. And, you know, she, it just it was very weird, like because she said that she was going to come up here to go to like a music festival. And even though I couldn't pay her, she was going to come anyways and come and shoot stuff with me. And, uh, and she seemed very, very cool, and I really, really liked her, and I thought, like, wow, she was, like, the perfect person. I'm so glad that, <laughs> that I, I uh, messaged her, because at first I was a little, like, eh, you know, because she has a lot of tattoos that uh, have to be covered up, but, like, I really, really like her a lot uh, in terms of this role. So she's too busy, and she can't, she could not make it out to do it. And that is the sad part, because now I think I might have to recast her, because, you know, I don't know. I don't know, I just, I, 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 it's really tough when you're making a production like this. You really can't afford to have someone flake out. You really can't afford to have someone be like, oh, sorry, I can't do that, like, you know, you need someone accountable and someone who can do what they need to do when they need to do it. So basically what I ended up doing after that was I made a checklist and it was basically all the rest of the scenes I had to film with me and myself. And so it was like the specific major scenes and since it would take too long to sound edit, I just uh, I just shot the video and uploaded all those video clips to YouTube as private videos, which I'll edit later. Uh, so that's what I'm doing with that, unfortunately. And so, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm going to have to take a little break here and just, you know, decompress from this really ugh, situation. You know, it definitely seems really cool though in terms of having stuff to write about in a in a book or something but not to experience it firsthand let's just say that and so I did end up completing every single scene on the checklist and I think it's funny because you know for the past couple of years of trying to use this casting platform which I assumed would be like you know, full of professionals and full of people who, you know, wanted to act. Instead of getting that, I got all these biatches and all these weird guys. Like, there was this one guy, and he said that he couldn't find the dialogue on my script. And I was like, God, this is really bizarre. Like, these people are fucking retarded. Uh, and then, you know, there were a lot of actors who constantly called me a fraud, they called me, like, they said, like, you know, they acted like I was some sort of a, uh, like, a human trafficker or something, and, like, just because I'm, like, a guy who's, like, casting, uh, independently casting, and it's been, like, really uh, difficult to deal with all this bullshit, because it feels like, you know, it's fine if you're, if, if you're a biatch, just, like, go be a biatch somewhere else, you know, like, I'm trying to make a movie, I'm trying to make my dreams come true, and I really don't need this bullshit with these uh, Karens and things, and so, uh, but I have met a couple who are very, very nice, uh, so that was really good. So anyways, that is it for shooting of Dr. Imperfect and the Perfect Man at this address, uh, 
I will have to figure something else out. I did have a really interesting idea that I wanted to bounce off of you guys. So my main set is, you know, it's a very unique looking room and it's it's going to be really tough to replicate it, especially because of the wallpaper. It's vintage, you know, very, very rare. So I basically have to photocopy it and stuff like that. Uh, and then the floor, of course, is a shag carpet. Uh, that's very rare. Um, the, the new place, it has a gray carpet and it has just blank white walls. And an entire half of the room has these closets. And so I really don't know how I'm going to be able to replicate that so what I was thinking was a really interesting idea, which is what if all the scenes where I'm with other people, I'm in the same, like the room could still have all the things in the places, like all the books, all the shelves and things, but instead of the look of the original room, it could be like the opposite. And so it could almost be like, it, it could be like symbolic. It could be sort of like a, hmm, like I wonder why that is. I wonder why the room keeps on switching around. I wonder why it continuously, you know, like changes and things. And, and so that's what I was thinking. So let me know what you guys think about that because I know that it might end up being kind of like confusing. Uh, but I was just thinking of doing that uh, possibly. Uh, so anyways, thanks so much for the support and for watching these personal <laughs> videos. Uh, it's, it's really cool to make these because, uh, you know, with a lot of this, with this whole experience, you know, it's just been me on my own. You know, I don't have any other people to make this with, you know, I don't have any production partners any co-director or any other people, you know, it's just me. And so I, you know, all these things happen. It's just like, it's fun to talk about them, uh, finally. So anyways, please like this video, comment, and then please subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to continue supporting me in my filmmaking journey. Goodbye, everybody. See you soon.